Okay, so let's now replace this green paint material with some nice leather-ish material. And this time we're not going to build it from scratch, but rather we are going to tap into a, a cloud library where you can find a lot of cool materials that you can add to your library. So whenever you're trying to create some special material and you can find anything like it in the uh, library here, hit M on the keyboard, keyboard to show that, by the way, you can go into the Keyshot Cloud, um, hit T on the keyboard to show your toolbar, uh, and then click this button down here. That will open up uh, the Keyshot Cloud in the browser, and you might have a prompt to uh, to sign in or even create a sign up if you don't have it already. But uh, I really recommend it because as you see, there's a lot of cool materials that you can download and use as a base for your own materials. So in here, there's uh, a lot of cool leather materials under the name Sørensen, S-O-R-E-N-S-E-N. -E so if we search for that, we will get a list uh, of a lot of cool leather materials. The problem is that it's uh, kind of hard to see here in the in the browser, like the different um, different details of the of the leather materials. So that's why I went in and created a chart that I could use for myself, but you also can use. Um, if you go to resources folder um, and into the misc folder. There's this Sanson leather chart.png file that uh, if you open that up and zoom into it, you can see very clearly the different uh, leather textures, leather surfaces, how they look. All right. So this is just a black variation or the darkest variation of all the leather materials. Um, a lot of them comes in different colors as well, and you can always color them yourself using their material graph. But uh, let's have a look at these um, materials. And I have found that for this uh, binocular, uh, I want to use uh, something like the Paris Passion Black, or not, not something like it. I want to use that exact leather material. So I go into the graph and I search for Paris, which gives me the four different colors. Um, of this leather material. I just want to have the black default one. So uh, I select that one and either you can hit download here, which I have found sometimes not works uh, depending on your setup and stuff. Um, but what usually works is to uh, select the material and then just drag it into your scene. Then if you go to your download folder here, uh, which is all the materials materials that you have downloaded from the graph, you see that it's uh, loading in this Paris Passion Black material. And when that is done, we can take it here from the library and drag it directly onto this part. And as before, I want to isolate just the single part so we can work a bit quicker with the material. And also, Alt Command, right click to center the part. Or you can also right click the part and hit center and fit part. Like so. All right, let's double click on the material to bring up the material options and open up the material graph. The material is pretty cool from the beginning, but I wanna just do some small um, extra details to it to uh, add to the scene. So we have the diffuse color. If you look at the, the color information, it looks like this. And, whoops, sorry. We have the uh, bump map as well. And when it's a bitmap that you use for a bump map, you can't see the color information when you hit C on the keyboard. But if you hit B on the keyboard, you can see the, the bump, uh, uh, the, or the normal map that is created from this bitmap used for the bump channel. Um, if you want to check out the bump channel only, not disturbed by the diffuse color, you can always right click on a 
on a link or a connection and uh, hit uh, disable. And then if we go and change the diffuse color to black and maybe adjust the roughness a bit, we can really see what the bump map is doing to this texture. So if we disable that as well, it's just completely smooth. Okay, so right now the the material is, again, it has the same roughness all over. And as before, I want to do some, uh, I want to use a map to drive the, the roughness. And here I'm going to use this uh, bitmap that we have, have for, for the diffuse and the bump. And this time, because it's not the one uh, that is into the bump, I can take it and drag it. Here and use the same one and drive that into the roughness as well. Um, so to better get an understanding of what is happening, I'm going to disable the diffuse and the bump inputs. So now we only have the roughness uh, showing up and uh, what's happening. And we can see that we want to do some adjustments to it. Uh, and again, as the other material, I'm going to use this color to number to adjust the values. What I'm after is, um, if we show the diffuse color, is that, um, okay, I want to add the bump map as well. Whoops. Right click and hit enable, like so. All these, uh, the top of the bumps, I want those to be more shiny than all the, the crevices. So if we disable it, we can see that all the white parts, I want those to be to be, to be more rough, and all the black parts, you know, I want those to be less. Or what did I say? I want the white spots to be shiny and the dark crevices to be less shiny. Cool. So show the color information. And as said before, what is black is going to be shiny and what is white is going to be uh, rough. Okay, so we want the inward of what we have right now. And uh, to do that, I'm changing the output from to one and output to to zero. And then it's completely white or looks like it. Uh, but when we have that, we can use the out input from and input to, to um, make the details more visible. So if we take the input two and dial way down, we can see that we get the the top here, the top of the bumps to be uh, black, which was rough and the rest is white. So if we look at the texture now, we can see that, um, and also if we enable the bump map and just view a small part of the material, we can see that the top of the, the bumps are now very shiny. Um, I don't want it to be, uh, this prominent so can take the uh, input you know, or I can take the output from and dial down and also the output to and dial up to tune in on uh, something I want to have a visible difference but again I want it to be uh, quite subtle I think the shininess of the top should be something like this and then the valleys could be something like this so to see the difference that this uh, roughness um, map is doing uh, i can disable it see that is uh, let's just dial the roughness up a bit this is uh, without using the, the map in the roughness channel, and this is with the map in the roughness channel. So you see that it creates some variation or more detail to the material. So if I hit, if I select the real-time view and hit Command-Shift-R, zoom out, you can see the uh, effect on the entire part. This is uh, with and without. Actually, I can see now I want the the leather material to be a bit darker. And what I want to use for that is uh, the utility node called Color Adjust. 
So again, right click, go to utilities and select the color adjust and take this uh, bitmap, drag it into the color and then take the output from the color adjust and put it into the diffuse channel. So now if I double click on the color adjust node, I can go in and take the value down and make the general texture a bit darker. Great, I think that will do it. So um, if I zoom out, show all parts and take a look at the material in relation to the other parts. I think it looks quite cool. Um, maybe it's a bit too shiny or the difference between the uh, shiny parts and rough parts a bit too much. So I might want to take that down. Let's look at this. Might want to bring the output to up. Cool. That will do. Let's close down the graph, maximize this window, zoom out a bit and proceed with the next material.